Okay, this is kind of an impromptu vid. It's, I'm basically going to relate something that just like happened about like I'd say about 20 minutes ago. It's, it's something, it's still with me now and it sparks something I've been thinking about. It's, earlier I had to go out to get some cigarettes for my wife. She normally doesn't smoke, but every now and then she gets stressed out and we are kind of going through a stressful situation so she just won just a pack of cigarettes. So I went out to get some cloves. She likes smoking clove cigarettes. I went over and picked them up. And there was a dude behind me as I was picking up my cigarettes. Actually, I guess it would help to tell the story all the way from the beginning. Because when I went to pick up the cigarettes, there was some other dude who just came up to me. And this was like late at night that I was doing this. I mean, it's like 1.43 now in the morning and I went to the cigarette spot. The place was closed up except for the window and I went and picked them up. And Zoo asked me if they sold booze there, which I told them, well, they normally do, but I don't think they're doing it now because the store is closed. And then somebody else told them another place to go, and the guy said, yeah, I'll walk a mile to get some beer. And there was another guy behind me, and he kind of rolled his eyes when he heard that. And as I walked away, the guy was like, man, I've heard of some people saying that they would go a mile to get a cigarette, but to go a mile to get drunk, and just shook his head. Now, as I was walking away, I noticed that he had a... He was wearing a uniform, and I noticed a CTA tag on his shoulder. CTA stands for Chicago Transit Authority. So I could tell he worked for public transportation in Chicago, which is like 20 miles away from here. And just offhand, because I'm trying to keep my options open and I'm looking for work, so I was like, um, you know, this is the CTA hiring. And he goes, I know, so he just went, yeah. And I'm like, well, what are they paying benefits like? And he goes, these things horrible, it sucks. And I chuckle at that because it's the sort of thing that you normally hear. And he's like, why the hell would you want to find out? Um, why the hell would you want to work there? And I was like, well, I just I was just asking, you know, just keep my options open. And then for, I guess, the next 10 minutes, he proceeded to tell me just how horrible the job was, how horrible the management was, and particularly how horrible the customers were. The customers earned a lot of his ire. He talked about how much many of them stink, that like, they smell like, in his words, they smell like, excuse the language, these are they smell like piss and shit, or they smell like blunts and beer, or they smell like all four. And half the time they come into the bus and they don't even have any money. And half the time they even ask you for money. Like, I mean, the rage that this guy, the more he talked, the more I could see the anger in him. But as he kept talking, I began to realize that this was not the normal type of complaining and bitching that people generally have for their job. This guy truly hated his job. Not just his job, but his life and all humanity around him. This is what his job reduced him to. I mean, at one point he even admitted to me when he said, he constantly kept saying to me over and over again, don't do it. Don't work for it. Do not work for these people. Do not take this job. You lose your sanity. You lose your life. You lose your reason to live. So at one point I asked him, why are you still working for these people? And he looked at me straight on and was like, five years. Five years. That's all I have left. Just five more years. And that's it. I'm old. I'm 57 years old. Just hold on to these five years and that's it. Get my retirement package and that's all. I just gotta hold on for five more years. There's nothing else for me out there. I'm old, I don't got time to start from scratch. I just gotta hold on for five more. It's the only thing that keeps me going. And he talked to me, I mean, another thing that shocked me was that he was talking to me about how he said this job has cost him two wives. One, because he had admitted also that this job, that the only thing that keeps him from going crazy every time he t goes to work is that when he comes home he has to drink and because of that he lost two wives over it. One, because she couldn't take his drinking and two, the second wife was because she didn't like the attitude he would have when he came home. He says the only person with him these days is his dog and his dog is the only thing that will let him drink. I mean of course we can talk about, we can argue over about how somebody might be weak-willed or weak-minded but the fact remains that's how his, his life was that much of a burden to him that this is what he's been reduced to. And of course he was focusing on how the job treats him like he's nothing. How, you know, he's just a number to them. And he showed me his shoulder like, see this? That's all I'm known as over there.
that's how I'm referred to. I don't have a name. I'm a number. And that's what you'll be too if you work there. Since you're, you're young, you're still sane. We need more sane people. Do not work this job. I'm just kept working that over and over. I can go into even more detail about the exact lines he said and how much he hated people in particular. And he was black and he hated black people because of this job. I mean, it was, it's phenomenal, but I don't really need to get into detail. I think you guys get the point. This guy's rage at the, his job and at the world and everything was up to biblical proportions. And it got me thinking. Is this what we've reduced ourselves to? I mean, is this what humanity has set up for itself? To the point where our jobs are so crummy that human beings' lives, they feel that their lives are that worthless. They, they hate humanity that much. Let me try to connect the dots here. This is, this is what I was thinking in my head. Let me try to at least give you a sense of my thought pattern as this was being said to me. I mean, some of the things he said were kind of humorous. I mean, the dark humor. I tend to laugh at things that other people think is inappropriate. But even I, after a while, was just like, there's, there's just something wrong about this for obvious reasons. Americans know that we are fed bullshit on a constant basis. It's become something of a joke. The great late George Carlin made a living out of exposing the bullshit that we are exposed to in life. But it's to the point where we just accept it now and don't really fully examine it. If you happen to live in Chicago and you take the CTA, you're exposed by the bullshit of that job all the time. If you take the trains or the buses, I'm sure you've seen the signs that you see the, the, the CTA signs with the smiling workers and the text talking about how they care about their workers and they care about the people who ride the buses and the trains and that they want to care about the service. And if it, since we're so used to bullshit, we just kind of process it without thinking about it and it stays in the back of our minds, we just like, oh yeah. But you know deep down inside is BS because simply just take the train, just look at the conductors driving the train as it comes down the track. You see the looks on their faces. I mean, just looks of complete misery. Does that look like the type of job where the people who run the corporation care about their employees? We know they're disgruntled. And the people who ride the trains are disgruntled because they're disgruntled. The people who run the CTA, they make millions off of public service and treat their workers like shit. And the workers in turn, because they're disgruntled, treat the customers like shit and the service is crap, not just because the workers don't really want to do their best, but because the people who run the company are trying to cut corners for their own profits. So it just is a never ending cycle of just disgruntled, just complete bitterness and anger that just continues to fuse. And this is what humanity set up for itself. This is what we do to each other. This is what the job, this is what human beings do to each other for their own employees. And it's become something of a joke that anybody who works in customer service, I'm pretty sure anyone who's working customer service, we make this joke all the time. How if you work in customer service or in any sort of job where you take care of the public or your public service, you hate the public after a while. And we treat it as a joke and we treat it as second hand. Yeah, after a while you work that job, you begin to really hate people. But don't you realize how wrong that is? It's supposed to be public service. If you're supposed to be serving the public, you're supposed to like humanity. But because of the way it's set up, because of the selfishness and greed and just plain old disgruntled stuff that goes on in society, it's like the complete opposite of what it's supposed to do and we just accept it because it's the norm. But it's not supposed to be that way. This is what we've set up for ourselves. If something as simple as public service can breed such discontent, such malcontent, it's no wonder the world is the way it is as far as the Western world is concerned. With po political, with, um, with um, politicians who don't give two shits about the people they're supposed to serve. With governments that do the complete opposite of what its citizens wanted to do. With complete tyranny beginning to come down, the, um, come down on all sides. It's no wonder things are like this. I mean, just, I mean, God, it's something as simple as simply talking to a bus driver can get you thinking about just how far we've fallen as a species in terms of society. We're supposed to be social animals. Yes, I understand the point of individuality, but we're also supposed to be social animals. We're supposed to have an innate care for each other. And this is what we set up for ourselves. 
to the point where a 57 year old bus driver has to drink every night just so he can do his job the next day say what you want about weak wills or he set himself up for all that but honestly doesn't anybody see what's so completely wrong about that am i the only one who sees that there's just something kind of fucked up about that or am i overreacting 